really near and dear to my heart because I started off my Navy career as an undesignated pack seaman and um, those were honestly the hardest two years of my life well year and a half um, and I really feel for people that are going into this program not really knowing what to expect because I didn't know what to expect and I feel like the actual job wasn't really explained to me how it should have been I want to make this video to kind of reach out to the people who went in or who have already sworn in as an undesignated seaman or who are just curious as to what the PACT program is. Now there's different types of PACT programs. There's seamen, airmen, and firemen. Um, seamen basically means you're gonna be, be able to choose a rate within the seamen or top side realm of the Navy, meaning like um, all the regular rates. I don't wanna say regular, but like all the sea, like the ship rates. Um, undesignated fireman means you're gonna be on the engineering side of the house, which is, you know, all the engineering rates. And then undesignated airman means you're gonna be on the air side of the Navy, which honestly, um, I hear a lot more um, controversy with the air side versus the sea side, meaning like the air side's better, you're attached to a squadron, you know, you don't have to be on the ship. I'm not an undesignated airman, I never was an airman, I never went to a squadron, so I don't really know, or I can't really tell you if it's, you know, better or whatever the case may be. I hear that it's better, but everyone is entitled to their own opinions. I can only talk about what I've gone through and give you the, um, the best knowledge in my personal opinions to the best of my ability because I've gone through it. Basically talking about the Seaman Pack program, Back when I joined the Navy in 2015, um, I joined as an undesignated seaman. I went that route because I wanted to join the Navy as a corpsman. Corpsman is basically a medical person. Um, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to be like in a medical field. I wanted to go to school for nursing. Once I actually got in the Navy and realized that HMs, which is the medical rate, um, don't really make rank, I didn't want to be an HM anymore. And I guess like it was a blessing in disguise because I didn't go in as that rate, meaning I was locked in to never really making rank as easy as I did as an OS. That was really a blessing in disguise for me. As a packed whatever, you are able to go to Navy without a job and kind of get a feel for the Navy and what other jobs are out there so that way when it is time for you to choose a job you're able to choose what you want that's the gist of what the packed program is a lot of people don't make it out of the packed program they hate it so much that they just get out the navy or they never choose or they try to get out on purpose whatever the reason being a lot of people don't make it out um on my ship i am one of the few success stories from the packed program and it's crazy because looking back at it now you know now that i'm a, a second class and you know, I have all this responsibility on the ship and things like that. People kind of look at the old um, cruise book or the yearbook or whatever from last deployment and be like, dang, y'all didn't even know you. I forgot you was an undesignated seaman or I forgot you were on deck or dang, you came a long way. Like you really see my success in being um, in the Navy with no job to having a job. It took me about, like I said, I make five years in a couple months, five years to get to where I am today. And although I went through a lot, I really went through a lot, um, I can say that I learned a lot and I wouldn't change my path for the world. I feel like everything that I went through happens for a reason and it made me the person I am today. So I am just truly blessed to say that I am where I am. I can give you guys the best advice that I can as far as, you know, people that are already joined and designated and or are thinking to join and the undesignated option comes to you. So um, when I joined, I went to MEPS, um, they didn't have corpsmen. So the lady told me there's all these other rates. And then she said, there is undesignated semen. I said, what is an undesignated semen? What is packed? She said, you're gonna be doing some really, really shitty work but at the end you get to choose what you want. And I said, okay, I want that because I could do some shitty work, but at least I can choose Foreman. So she said, are you sure? I said, yes. And she said, okay. Um, she didn't really specify what kind of shitty work, but I learned real quick as soon as I got to my boat that I was gonna be needle gunning, chipping, painting, sanding. Um, I was basically like a, a freaking Bob the Builder for the ship. <laughs> I was literally doing everything. I was needle gunning, I was sanding, I was painting, I was getting dirty, um, I was dirty every single day. Like, I was I, I was not doing what I'm doing now. <laughs> um, so it was just a lot for me, especially for someone that's really girly like me, who loves to wear makeup, who loves to get their nails done, all that jazz. So it was the rate, um, I depthed out a couple months later and I was boot camp, right after boot camp I went to A school. My A school for um, undesignated semen or packed semen is uh, nine days. So I was in school for nine days. I pretty much went to BM A school or Bozeme A school. Bozeme is the rate that needle guns, paint, sands, um, 
works with the anchor. Everything on the ship that has to do with maintaining the ship's um, overall like readiness and how the ship looks and stuff like that, that's what the Bosa Mate uh, rate is. So um, I went to their A school. I learned a little bit of what they know. And nine years later, I was off to Virginia and I was basically on my ship. So the ship was very, it was a lot. It was basically really different. I'm from Texas, so Texas and Virginia are two completely different states. And my time in deck was, <laughs> that's funny. No, but my time in deck was, it was, a, it was definitely a learning experience. I joined the Navy as an E2 because um, I didn't do ROCC. I started off as an E1, but I basically recruited two people um, while I was in depth. I recruited them to join the Navy. They joined, swore in. So then that put two people under my belt, which gave me a boost to E2. And then when I was in A school, BM A school, um, I got the highest GPA in the whole class. They promoted me to E3. So I left A school as an E3. As an E3, you're eligible to go ahead and choose your rate and take an advancement exam for the rate that you want. But as soon as I checked on board my ship, between the day that I made E3 and then that time before I got to the ship, um, the instruction changed to where you have to be on board the ship for a year before you can strike a rate. And I didn't know that until I actually checked on board the ship and they were like, okay, you know, I talked to my NC1, I was like, okay, well, when can I take an exam, blah, blah, blah. You, you have to be on board for a year. I was like, what? They didn't tell me that. So then he showed me the instruction. They had literally just changed and I was so bummed out. I was like, yo, like, okay. Okay, so I literally have to wait a year. Okay, that's fine. So. I was in deck for a year. I went on deployment in deck. I did everything that I never thought I would do. Like I literally felt like Bob the Builder. Like I was like, yo, I did not join the Navy to be painting somebody's ship. Mm -mm. So, um, but like I said, that's what I did for about a year. And then once that year was over, I was eligible to start a rate. Um, rates that I was going for at first, like YN, PS, pretty much um, administrative rates where I just work with paperwork and work with people and stuff like that I just felt like that's what I wanted to do I was tired of doing like grungy dirty work and I just wanted somewhere where I can just be in the AC space not get my hands dirty so I went for those rates at first um, they weren't taking anybody they were not really overmanned but they just weren't taking me so I was like you know what I need to pick something else um, I don't want to be a corpsman like I originally wanted because they don't make rank I don't want to be e E4 forever or E3 forever I've been in the Navy for almost two years now like I want to make some money the next rate that I was looking at was OS because I saw how early they got off like I was cool with a lot of OS's on the ship and they was getting out work at like 11 o'clock like whenever we were out to sea like on deployment OS's was just in the berth and chilling like they didn't really have nothing to do they were in the gym like they were always doing everything else but work Working. and I was always working always always working so I was like you know what that is what I want to be <laughs> so that's that's what led me to choose OS but um yeah so like I said I was working and um, I finally chose my rate I put in for OS I got OS the very next month and I became an OS with me being a young seaman not knowing anything about the Navy not having a rate not really having any sense of direction to now being an E5 having a lot of responsibilities um knowing a lot more about the Navy knowing my rate and just kind of being overall a sailor that's contributing to the Navy I definitely came a long way I can say um I know a lot of people on my boat that have known me since I've been there since 2015 um know that I've came a long way and I really am proud of where I am today. Basically I just want to kind of tell you my story to, to let you know that if you are an undesignated seaman or if that option is available to you or you just swore in or don't look at it as always bad. Um, like I said a lot of people don't make it out because they hate it so much they just don't want to be in the Navy anymore but if you are undesignated do not let you know that hard work or the, the BS will push you from not fulfilling something that you originally wanted to do which is be in the navy just know that you're not going to be undesignated forever like you will eventually have to choose a job like i said os wasn't my original choice but after i kind of looked at all the pros and cons and know that they get off early because they got off early i was able to go to college like actually go to class because i had so much free time um when we were in port after the last deployment i was able to actually accomplish a lot of things because of the rate that i chose hence why i'm filming this video right now it's monday three o'clock p.m. <laughs> so just really kind of opening your eyes to know that there always is a light at the end of the tunnel. I kind of wanted to just keep, give you guys my little spiel. Um, yeah, but now let's talk about the instruction now because the instruction has definitely changed since I was undesignated. Pretty much the instruction now, it says that so if you're an E1, after nine months, you'll be an E2 automatically. Um, if you come in as an E2, after nine months, you'll be an E3 automatically. The way the new SIPPACT um, program works is that 
If you're an E3, you have to be an E3 for nine months before you're eligible to pick a rate. Once you pick a rate, then you automatically become an E4 in that rate. You automatically become a third class. For me, it wasn't like that. For me, um, once I was an E3, I chose the OS rate. I had to take the exam and then put on third class. Vices now, you don't even take the exam. Once you've waited that nine months, you just pick your rate, you're automatically a third class. So that is definitely a plus, which really helps out the people that have that were in the PACS program because you have to wait so long before you can choose a rate. I mean, you're holding out on money that you could be making. Vices, people that come in with a rate already and they're already E3, they take the exam next cycle and you know they already make rank i just feel like it's a really good thing i feel like it's not a bad gig now um like i said you are going to be doing a lot of bs work but um overall it just kind of depends on what you want um, i'm actually looking at mine at the semen packed like description and it says like the ratings in the semen professional apprenticeship career track program so the ratings that you are able to choose, I'm actually gonna leave the links to this uh, post down below in this video, but um, for administration, you can be an MC or mass communication specialist, a CS, which is a culinary specialist, LS, logistics specialist, PS, personnel specialist, IT, information system specialist, RP, religious program specialist, RS, retail service specialist, YN, yeoman, MU, musician. Uh, for ordinance, be a GM, gunner's mate, or MN, which is mineman. For navigation, you can be a BM, which is a bosun mate, or a QM, which is a quartermaster. For electronics, you can be an ET, electronics technician, FT, fire controlman, MT, missile technician, FT, fire control technician, ST, sonar technician, and OS, operation specialist. I have no idea why operation specialist is electronics. I mean, I can, I can see why we'd be in electronics. Hmm. Anyways, so those are all the rates that you can kind of choose whenever you finish your pack program but if there's a rate that you want to do like maybe like a ct like a cryptologic technician there's a test that you have to opt in to take in order for you to be open to that rate there's so many other rates that you can cross rate to when that might not be available to you on this list but you're able to kind of convert between different rates like i know there was a couple aviation rates available to me even though i wasn't packed airman i was packed seaman so whenever you go talk to nc which is navy counselor they'll be able to see you everything that you're eligible for yeah that's really all i have to say for this video this video really was just kind of reaching out to the people that are undesignated or um, that have been offered the undesignated job and they really weren't sure what it was or what you're going to be doing. Um, coming from my experience as being undesignated and working my way basically from the bottom all the way to the top. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share my story with you guys. I also wanted to share like, you know, the new instruction. Yeah, if you guys go to MEPS and you guys offer the PAC program, um, look at all the other rates that are available to you and then kind of decide what's best for you. Um, like I said, it's not for everybody. It definitely wasn't for me, but I definitely pushed through it and made it through. Just know that it was just a temporary job and I came out of it. If you can do it, definitely you can too. So that's pretty much what this video was for. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. For all the pack seamen out there, pack airmen, pack firemen, like I really hope that you guys push through it and just know that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you guys for your support and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.